you have reached Red Steel's Awesome Toy Culture Review. I'm your man, Red Steel. And today I have a really spectacular review because today's review is going to be on SH Figure Watch Super Saiyan Rose Goku Black. SH Figure Arts Super Saiyan Rose Goku Black. But before I get into the actual review, I just want to go over some of the stunning details on this packaging. Up front here you have a triple display window showing you both the figure and all of his accessories inside. Then over here you have like a holographic sticker that says Tamashi Nation Quality. Then over here in the front of the box and it kind of carries over to the side of the box. You get some examples of the poses that you can put Goku Black into. Then on the back of the packaging here, you have all of the figure's features. Over here it says, Goku Black, Super Saiyan Rose. A full array of interchangeable hand and face parts allow for expressive portrayal of the anime. Then over here it says, Simple Style and Heroic Action. SH Figure Arts is a standard action figure series that uses the art style and technology of Tamashi Nation to pursue character expression through humanoid action. Then up here it says, Super Modeling. Masterfully crafted sculpt accurately depicts the character in meticulous detail. Then over here it says, Super Action. Dynamic articulation enables recreation of iconic action sequences from the anime. SH Figure Arts Super Saiyan Rose Goku Black Goku Black was released on August of 2021 with the suggested retail price of $34.99 and he's available at select retailers. Goku Black has multiple points of articulation and his accessories include 3 swappable faceplates and 5 swappable hands. Goku Black stands approximately 5.5 inches tall and he is meant for fans ages 15 and up. I want to go over some of Goku Black's play features and accessories. And I have to admit to you guys, when I first saw this figure on toy shelves, I passed on him. I just wasn't feeling it. I mean, another evil, Go evil Goku concept. I mean, how many times were they going to revisit this whole, this whole storyline? I mean... They overplayed it in Dragon Ball Z. And you know, if you go way back, you remember when Ginyu and Goku switched bodies. So essentially, Goku's friends were battling evil Goku. Around the same time they released that movie, Tree of Might, where an evil Goku, or an evil, a guy that looked just like Goku, who was a villain, battled it out with Goku and his friends. Then later on, shortly after that, they released a TV special based on Goku's father's life. And yes, Goku's father looked just like Goku. And he was an evil saying at first, at the beginning of the special. You know, he kind of redeemed himself towards the end. And he went up against Freezer. And he kind of fell to Freezer. But still, it was another evil Goku concept. So already in that small amount of time, they revisited that concept three times. Well, I mean, they also did that kind of with Goten, Goku's son, where... He looked just like Goku, and I think goodness when Goten grew up, they kind of gave him his own look because, I mean, two Gokus running around would just would not be fun anymore. I mean, it was revisited and just redone way too many times. So when Dragon Ball Z Super announced that they had a, a the main villain was going to be a guy like just like Goku, and they named him Goku Black, I was like, again, come on guys, you guys, you guys, where's the inspiration behind that? I mean, you already brought back Freezer, which. I mean, it grew on me, and it worked. And with Goku Black, the same thing. I mean, at first, I wasn't feeling it, but it did grow on me, and now I, it makes sense. You gotta watch the whole series to kind of understand how it makes sense. And, and as you can see, a lot of his pieces, I mean, his hair sculpt and his fists, are retooled and redecoed from 
the early release SH figure Super Saiyan Full Power Goku. I mean, you, you can see that right here, they just remolded the hair in a pink plastic. And they added some metallic, to, metallic paint to it, so when you angle it in the right lighting, you see them like a metallic luster, which is a really cool effect. Also, through, throughout a lot of Goku Black's gear, you see a pink tinge. And that's to simulate the whole when he powers up. And, you know, he has that pink aura, and they kind of incorporated it right into his, his gear. It's really, really cool. I mean, when you look at it from a company aspect, making a figure like this as soon as they did after the Super Saiyan Full Power Goku makes a lot of sense because they already had the tooling for the head, the hair, the fist. They just had to do uh, you know, a little bit of altering with the rings and the earring right here. But it makes a lot of sense from a company standpoint. So when you saw that they released a Super Saiyan Full Power Goku, knowing that there was a Super Saiyan Goku uh, Black, you know, it was, it was bound to happen. But he comes with a lot of accessories and a lot of retooling from the Super Saiyan Full Power Goku. First, let me talk about his, his Kamehameha hand. You could not have a Goku unless he's able to do the Kamehameha. The only difference between these set of hands and the set of hands that came with Full Power so, uh, Son Goku is they actually retooled some ring detail. This ring detail is done real nicely because they actually made it into a metallic paint or a metallic silver. So when you angle it right, you just kind of see that there's a ring there. And, you know, I can't rave enough about how great or how much detail Tamashi Nation and SH figure art, uh, action figures have. I mean, Bandai did a fantastic job with this figure. I mean, there's knuckle detail, finger knuckle detail, fingernail detail. I mean, how many action figure lines do you see with fingernail detail? And when you flip it over and you look at the palm, you see some palm detail. At the back of the fingers, you see those little little folds where the, the finger folds, little, little lines in the hands. Really, really cool. In the second set of hands, you have the semi-open hands. And this is the one, I think, where he does like a one-handed um, energy blast. You know, and, or when he's blocking or whatnot. I mean, there's so many different poses you can use these hands for. And again, with the right hand, they included that ring. And from what I can remember, and it's been a minute since I've seen Dragon Ball Super, this ring does play a significant role. I'm not sure, I can't remember what exactly, but it plays a big role in the storyline. Go ahead and put that off to the side. And the final hand that you have, you know, completing the five swappable hands, including the two right here, so you have seven all together. You have a lot of a lot of a lot of different options in it interchangeably with the hands. You have that ring detail again. And this is the finger detail where he's pointing. And I know when Goku points, he points with two fingers. I'm not sure on Goku Black's mannerism, I'm not sure if he points with two fingers also. But this hand is also used for the instant transmission. And I'm gonna use this hand to kind of show you guys the interchangeability with the different swappable hands. On the back of each hand, you have a little porthole right there. And this is a different take than other action figure companies because the typical action figure company likes to put the peg on the back of the hand. Well, when you remove the, the hand, you notice that the peg is on the wrist. It's like a ball socket peg. You know, that, and that's also a different take because usually with most interchangeability with other action figure companies, um, they do the porthole in the wrist. So you go and you take this hand, just plug it right into that ball socket joint, and now you have Goku with his instant transmission. Oh, I'm sorry, Goku Black. Pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and take this hand out and put his default hand back in. Because, you know, they, they're easy to swap in and out. But you got to be careful because that, that ball socket peg is actually on a swivel joint. So it can move side to side. So it be, you have to work it a little bit. But next I want to go ahead and talk about his interchangeable faceplate. And Tamashi Nation and uh, Bandai had a different take on the interchangeability with the head. Instead of sculpting a separate head, which probably would drive up the cost of the figure a little bit, so they would have to make maybe four heads, you know, for the specific figure. I mean, you're reusing a lot of parts in different head, head sculpts anyway. You're just changing the face. Well, they figured it out by doing this. And you go ahead and you pull this hair detail out in the front. It's held on by a couple pegs right here. Two pegs. And you got the hair sculpt right here where you got two portholes right there. We'll put this off to the side. And you have these interchangeable face plates. You pull this face plate out like that. It's held on by a couple pegs. If you look at the face plate, top of the face plate, you got a couple pegs right there. And where the ears should be, you got a couple portholes. His default face is one where he's kind of sneering. I'm going to go ahead and put that off to the side. You also get a face where he's just got that 
that blank look on his face where he doesn't really display much emotion right there. And then the third face plate, you have one where he's gritting his teeth like he's mad. Urgh, I'm gonna beat you up. Then on this one, and this is my favorite face plate because this is the one where he's powering up, where he's got the open mouth. In order to put this face plate on, like I mentioned earlier, I got two pegs right there. You just plug it right into that hair piece on the smaller portholes, right there on the bottom. Then you go and you grab that hair piece again. You have the two pegs right there. At the top of the hair piece right there, you have those two pegs. Then you go and you just peg it right in, and now you have Goku Black powering up. I mean, the posability is really cool too. The one thing that bothers me about this figure, and the Goku figure too, is certain poses you have to be careful because the sleeve right here separates from the actual shirt. But that's easy fix, you can push it back up. But I mean, these figures are not meant for playing with. I mean, you can do some cool stop motion stuff with these figures because there's a lot of articulation. You have double jointed knees, you have toe articulation, ankle articulation, it rotates the ankle. I can see why they didn't make the whole boot rotate because the boot's the same all the way around. You know, so they kind of like, you know, save that that point of articulation right there. And, and to reduce cost too, because you know, more points of articulation, the figure costs a little bit more because there's a little bit more engineering. I just pop off the foot by accident. It's on a ball socket joint, so it just pops right back into place like that. So I'm sure if you, you put this figure in a certain pose and it pops apart, there's ways of putting it back together. And I know with my Super Saiyan Goku, when I was posing him, his leg popped off, but it's all ball, so ball socket joint, so it works. And we have articulation right here, you got articulation around the hip right here, like below the sash, at the one right here, you have just a lot of articulation. You know, I, I don't think I have the, the points of articulation listed, but there's just so many. But, you know, this figure is fantastic. I mean, I would highly recommend this figure. I mean, you're never a Dragon Ball Z fan, and I'm a kind of a completist, so like, Every single SH figure arts that they're going to release for Dragon Ball Z from this point forward, I'm probably going to pick up. But if you guys found any of the information in this review valuable, please like and share this video. Also, if you really enjoy my content, please subscribe to my channel. And while you're there, click the bell to be notified of any future videos. I want to thank you guys for watching Rad Seal's Awesome Toy Collector Review. I'll check you guys out next time.